good morning. Uh, my name is Per Torvason. Welcome to this course in planning of line of sight radio relay systems. Uh, today we will go through chapter one, the introductory chapter. Here you see a parabola, a parabolic antenna. It's shooting in this direction and down here. Why is this antenna so big? Well, it's because it's shooting from here to a passive a reflector, which is here and down here again. And a lot of the energy is lost in this passive reflector. And that's the reason why this antenna has to be so big. But we will go through all this in due time. Um, the course objective is to give you a comprehensible introduction to the planning of radio relays. The topics will be wave propagation in the atmosphere. We will also be able to draw terrain profiles and to do performance and availability calculations, do frequency planning, and also calculate equipment reliability. Uh, ITUR have a lot of resources that can help you. Here is the website to the resources. And you see here, there is a lot of recommendations when it comes to radio wave propagation. It's just to pick the different ones and you can look into them. Here is, for instance, radio noise, reference to atmosphere for refraction, ground wave propagation, etc., etc. And also, it has some other resources that is very interesting, and especially this one is interesting for us, is ITUR P530 dash something. I took this out in 2013 and then it was dash 15. This number here is always increasing when they change the formulas, etc., etc. So you have to look for the newest one. Uh, and this is very interesting reading and is based on accumulate knowledge for the six, last 50 or 60 years when it comes to radio propagation. Uh, ITUR has also some handbooks and two of them is very handy and that is radio wave propagation information for the design of terrestrial point to point links. And also this handbook of radio metrology is very interesting when you are dealing with radio links. Uh, also show you here some literature and of course we have put our own book on top uh, it's maybe not available longer uh, when it uh, paperback but it's old it's out there on the internet in various places I've seen and if you don't find it just email me and I will send you a copy and then we have Kerr, then short radio waves, propagation of short, which is a good book. This is extremely good book, the effects of the troposphere on radio communication, but it's difficult to find. Uh, this is interesting when it comes to metrology, it's called radar meteorology. It's dealing with radar, but much of it we can also use with radio propagation. And then uh, there we have another book called Microwave Propagation and Remote Sensing. And of course, there's a lot of other books, but uh, these is the ones I can recommend because I've read them myself. Uh, okay, chapter one, which is the introduction chapter, we will look at the radio link basic. We will look at the trends, and the trends is from backbone to spur links. There are many more radio links now than there have ever been, but the Parts are shorter and it's more frequency congested and is, all, is also higher frequencies. And then outages due to precipitation becomes an issue because at high frequency, rain and sleet and snow is a problem. And it goes from redundant to non-redundant system because when they are short parts, it's in the outer parts of the network and then you can save money by making them non-redundant. And that's due to the economy of the scale. And also Radio Link has become a commodity product. Uh, it costs next to nothing. And that means that vendors cannot afford systems planners anymore. I lost my job due to that. 
but anyway, this course may help you to calculate for yourself. But first of all, what is dB? Well, that is the engineer's way of not telling the economist what they are doing. Well, <laughs> that was a joke. Uh, the dB uh, or the dBm, as we are going to use, is the 10 logarithm of milliwatts. And the reason why we are dealing with dB is that it goes from large to small in a very simple way. 3 dB doubles the power. So we are typically sending out uh, something like uh, 30 dBm, which is one watt. And then we are receiving something in this star here somewhere. And then it's very nice to have the dB scale because you see that the linear scale that doesn't really tell you much, it's just flat here. So that is why we are using the dB scale. Okay, then we have different forms of digital transmission. We have the satellite, we have the coax cable, radio relays, which is our topic. And then we have the optical fiber. In the backbone networks, the optical fiber is very popular. When it comes to television broadcast, satellite is popular, coax cable, maybe indoors, and also radio relays on, on short parts. Here just uh, a tower at the Rönnvik mountain in Buda. You here see radios in all shapes. This is a very old one. These are new ones. You see that those are smaller. They are shooting very short distances. Here is an older one shooting at longer distance. And you see typically it has an output power of 29 dBm. The receive power is about minus 50 dBm and the threshold is, is about minus 72 dBm. Frequencies all here, this is 800 megahertz, five gigahertz is typically this, seven also, and 26 is typically this. So the smaller the antennas, typically the higher the frequency because the gain is higher at higher frequency, and we will come back to that. Here you say, see a, a radio link system. Here is on the one side, here is at the other side. Here you have the radios, and here you have the waveguide. It looks like this, and then it goes into a parabolic antenna. It sends a lot of frequency F1 to F8 in this di direction, and the duplex frequency in the other direction. That means these frequencies are paired typically with the same distance between this frequency and this frequency, so between this and this, and so on and so forth. And then we have this terrain profile and microwave transmission have to be clear of the terrain as we will look into later. And we see here we are shooting like this and the terrain is below. So this is good. Here you see a radio link systems. Here we have a transmitter here and a receiver here. And, our, and it's a, what we call a one plus one frequency and space diversity system. One plus means that you have one channel and one redundant channel. And here you see a signal comes here and it's split into two. It goes into two modulators and in two transmitters and two different filters. And you see there are different frequencies here. And then you come to the circulator. The circulator does what it says. It circulates, so the frequency coming in here is circulated out here, circulated out here, and F1, when it hit, uh, hits the filter for F2, it's returned and goes like this, and then it's circulated and out on the main antenna. And then F1 and F2 is sent out. The receiving frequencies are coming in here, and they are circulated down here, and F1 is sent in here and goes through this one, this receiver and then this combiner into this demodulator. And also F1 comes into this antenna, goes through the filter and is combined. So here you see 
two antennas receiving the same frequency f1 f1 and the reason for having two antennas is that you will have two different signals and we will look at that later on uh, but there is a large benefit of having space diversity systems and it's combined and demodulated and also the frequency f2 is the same way it one goes into the main antenna here and it's coming like this the other one is going to this antenna it's combined and demodulated and then you have a selection mechanism that choose either f1 or f2 so this is a one plus one frequency and space diversity system here you see a typical lineup of antennas here you see one antenna shooting in this direction and one in this direction and here is a smaller one this is just shooting uh, a kilometer or something this is shooting uh, 30 40 kilometers and this is shooting about 20 kilometers here is an indoor part and here you see the indoor part of, of the radio and then you have power supply here and in this case, we are using the radio with an ADSL system. So why do we do use microwaves? Well, the power is easily kept in keyhole beams. You see here, for instance, this is Voyager 1. It has a microwave antenna. And the reason why is that it can send the energy back to earth or the signal back to earth in a small beam and even though we have huge frequency resources they will be huger when we go to high frequency and so we are forced to use higher frequency most of the lower frequencies are now used for for instance mobile uh, communications like uh, telephony and stuff like that so the radio link has to go to frequency above the three gigahertz so how do we get the data on the air and back again well it's a, a fact that we can send binary digits in the air so we have to transform the binary digits that we come here which is 155 megabits data in this case we have to make it into some kind of sinusoidal um, waves. And the, the way we do it is we create what we call an I and a Q channel. And you see here, this is eight and this is three. And we make this channel here with eight in this direction and three up here. And this will be a point in a two dimensional space and then we have the constellation diagrams we have 128 64 and 32 km here you see 128 here you see 64 well, well let me count one two three four five six seven eight yeah it's 64 and there is 32 and then the problem is that the more points you get the closer they will be to each other and the easier it's to get errors when the the point goes from this to this point so here you see when we have 32 qm we can if we have the same power as in this case we can have longer distance between the points and it's less likely that we will have errors as we see here and how does this look in time well let's see here is the i and q and here is in norwegian tid which is, means time and here we see something like goes like this whoops there will be the first one there is the second one and you see here we are going in from this point here in the iq diagram 
to this point in the IQ diagram and this point in the IQ diagram. What happens in between, we don't care about. We are just interested when we are measuring. So why do we use high QI modulation? Well, we save frequencies. In 32 QIM, we are using 55 megahertz. With 64 QIM, we are using 40 more megahertz. And with 128 QIM, we are using 28 megahertz. And how do we do this? Well, we start with a signal here at the intermediate frequency and to get it up here on, on the microwave or the radio frequency. We are using uh, what we call a mixer. And here we see the mixing, the local oscillator. Typically, these days, this is done digital. Here is in the next part, and that is the amplifier. And you see it will send, receive, and convert. That is what we are doing, amplify, send, receive, convert. And here is an amplifier, and here we see a mimic that is a very small digital circuit. And demodulation, what we are going to do, which symbol was sent. Well, here is the demodulation. And we are demodulating in three dimensions. So we will have to find out at which instant in time should we demodulate. So this is the demodulation. And then we have two analog to digital uh, converters. And then we have to guess that we must go like this with the selection of time so that we find the optimum uh, signal. And here you see what happens when we have a very good signal to noise level. That means we have a signal which is much higher than the, the background noise, noise. We will receive something like this. The points here are very close to each other and it's not possible to guess wrong because if you get a signal here, you know it's this signal that you should use. When the signal to noise level is less, this kind of blurs out. But still, you are certain that the signals you get here actually should be here. When you are coming here, the signal to noise level is even worse. And then you begin to ask yourself, is this dot here from here or is it from here? Well, hopefully, if we guess it, it's from here, that is right. But here, when the signal to noise level is too low, you see that these points migrate into each other and there will be errors. Uh, and this was the first chapter of uh, radio relay link, oh, sorry, radio relay planning. Uh, and if you want to learn more, you just have to ask for it and I will put out more chapters. There are four cha 14 chapters in all that will go through all the glory details about re radio relay planning, but uh, in order to see them all, you have to demand them. Okay, so that will be all for today. Thank you very much for listening.